All right. So we're going to take a look at the distributive property and kind of how we can model that and then how we can also solve this um, in terms of uh, just doing some algebra with it. So to start off with here, um, we can look at an equation like this example here. You've got it on your page as well. Um, and basically, we're adding to what we already had, right? So prior to this, we've talked about solving two-step equations. Essentially, this makes it into a what can be a three-step equation. Um, and so what this means here, this two in front of the brackets, means that I have two groups of everything inside the brackets. Now, in the case of this one, it's really not all that difficult, but I could model this something. And I can make my little balance beam, which we're going to pretend is a straight line. Um, and we're going to have two groups of x plus 1. So there's going to be here's one group. Ooh. Right, here's my x, which I color in so nicely, plus one more. It's a little square to show my x. And I've got another group that's the same as that. So here's my other x. And here is my plus 1. Right, so about two groups like that. And that is equal to 6. I've got six of my shaded in little squares. We're going to pretend that they are all exactly identical and resting nicely on my balance beam. All right, so in terms of modeling it, that's what we're looking at. So that helps you imagine, I guess, what's going on here. Perfect. If that doesn't help you imagine it, then let's just take a look at solving it a little bit more algebraically. Right? So just like usual, we have to figure out, you know, coming back to this, we want to get, first of all, just the x's by themselves, however many of them there ends up being. Um, and then we want to get an individual x by itself. So we're going to get rid of, on the side with the, with the variables, we're going to get rid of the extra ones. So this one and this one have to go away. But before we get to that, if we're doing this algebraically, before we can just kind of make those magically go away, what we do need to do is get rid of the brackets. Um, so mathematically, right, I've got two, I'm just rewriting it here, um, x plus one, you should be writing this down on your notes page. So you've got the example is equal to six. Hopefully yours is slightly neater than what I've got. Now what the distributive property means, that's coming back to this big word here, is this number out in front of the brackets. So I'm saying there's two groups of everything inside of it, which means there's going to be two of the first thing, and there's going to be two of the second thing. And if there was a third thing, there'd be two of those as well. Um, and a fourth thing, and so on. We could keep going if there was a whole bunch of stuff in the brackets. As it is, we've got an x in the brackets, and we ha we're adding 1 to it in the brackets. So we're going to multiply 2 times the x. 2 times the x is just simply going to be 2x. All right. And we're going to multiply 2 times the 1. 2 times 1 is 2. This is nice and easy math. We can all do this without thinking too hard. All right, now my next step, I've got 2x plus 2. Well, the opposite of plusing this 2, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides because I want to make this go away. Um, so I've got 2x plus 2. I'm going to subtract 2 now. And if I do that to the left side, i got to do the same thing on over here. All right. So at this point, I'm left on this left side. Adding 2, I'm subtracting 2, that just goes away. I'm left with 2x. And this is going to be equal to well, 6 subtract 2 is going to be 4. Lovely. 
Uh, now, 2 times x is equal to 4. I know you can do this in your head, but let's just show the work so that when we get to unpleasant numbers, we know what we're doing. I'm going to divide this side by 2. I'm going to divide this side by 2. 2 times 2 divided by 2. I'm left with just x. Sorry, 2 times x and then divided by 2. Left with just x. 4 divided by 2, I'm left with 2. Okay. And if I wanted to you know, plug this back into my original thing to check it. Well, if x is equal to 2, got x plus 1, so 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Left side and right side are the same. All right, um, let's move on to the bottom part here. All right, so same kind of deal. We can model and solve this guy here. Um, in this case, there's going to be four groups of P plus 6. So this is a little bit on my part on the computer, harder to draw. So I'm going to just kind of cheat. Ha. Right here is my P. It looks an awful lot like my X did. And we're going to have six more ones with this. Oh, my goodness. We are going to assume all of these squares are separate from each other and the same size and neatly shaded in. And then we're going to have not just one of these guys. We are going to have four of these P plus six little bubbles on one side of our balance scale. And we're going to have 26 of these other guys on the other side. Again, I am not going to draw 26 of them. I will let you do that for this little bit in your notes, but I'm not going to be super picky if you don't do it perfectly. I am going to be super picky about this side. Um, so we got to make sure we do this side correctly. So again, we write this out four times P plus six. So four groups of P plus six. Again, if I was writing this out or drawing this out over here, that would mean I have four of these bubbles that have a P and then six more little dots in it on this side. And then I have 26 little squares over on this side. So this is equal to 26. All right, now my next step now, use the distributive property. So I have four groups of this P plus six stuff. So I gotta say four times the P and four times the six. So four times P is four P. Four times the six is 24 and I'm adding it. So four P, P sorry, plus 24 is equal to 26. All right. Next step, I want to get the P's by themselves. So 4P plus 24. You should notice that this, at this point right here, this looks like the two-step problems you've just been doing. All right. So now I'm going to subtract 24 from this side to get rid of it. Um, and now I'm left with just 4p over here. This is equal to 26. And again, I got to subtract 24 here because I did it to the other side. Probably you can do this neater and stay in the lines. Um, we're now left with 4p is equal to 2. 4 times p, so the opposite of that is going to be divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. This looks like we're going to get some, we can express this as a decimal or a fraction. Um, if you're in grade 9, you're going to have to get used to the idea of the, that as a fraction. Um, but we can write it as 0 0.5 as well. So 1 half, I just simplified this, or 0 0.5. All right, now, at this point... There's a little bit of an assignment for you to work on. When you're done those questions, 
Um, coming back to this, we can do this one of two ways. And so there's a few more questions you can see down here um, that go with this. Um, oh, I did this one differently. Um, my apologies. The assignment is simply in the footer here, which means um, don't just start the assignment right away. Um, look at the notes here first, because there's another way I can do this. Um, and so, yeah, let's take a look at this here. We can use the distributive property here, multiply through the brackets, or we can uh, work backwards here. And so I'll, I'll kind of show how both ways end up with the same answer. Um, and depends on the question, which one is more work. So distributive property, this is what we've been doing up above. All right, 2G and 2 times 4 is 8. So I end up here with 2G plus 8 is equal to negative 8. And I'm going to subtract 8 from this side now. Um, and subtract another 8 from this side. So again, showing my work, 2g plus 8 minus 8 is equal to negative 8 minus 8. It does not mean that this negative 8 just goes away. It's actually becoming more negative here. So I'm left on this side with 2g, that is not the prettiest 2 I have ever written, um, is equal to negative 16. I'm going to divide this side now by 2, because 2 times g, opposite of that, is divide by 2. I'm going to divide by 2 here. And I am left with not a lot of room on my screen. g is equal to negative 8. All right, um, working backwards, we're going to end up with something fairly similar here. Sorry, my dog just wanted out. Um, working backwards, I'm going to have something fairly similar, but what I'm going to do to get rid of the brackets here is I've got... I've got two times all this stuff up here. I can just divide both sides by two at the beginning and save myself a little bit of trouble. So let's do that. So again, I rewrite this two times g plus four is equal to negative eight. So this is two times this stuff. I'm going to divide it this side by 2, and of course i got to do the same thing over here. Um, I'm left now here with just g plus 4. And this is going to be equal to negative 4. Oh, that is not a pretty 4. That's slightly better. All right, at this point here, I go, okay, well, i got to, hey, this is nice. I've got a one-step equation. So I've got g plus 4. I'm just going to subtract 4 from both sides. Probably you could have done this in your head, but again, we're showing our work so that when the numbers get um, more unpleasant, um, we can still know how to do the work. Um, so the 4 minus 4 on this side goes away and we're left with just g over here and I've got negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8. So in this case slightly less writing. This works really nicely when we have um, the thing on both sides. So the 2 in the front and the 8 I can divide them both by 2. right? The 8 in this case can be divided by 2. Um, I'm going to just get rid of my ink here and scroll up just a little bit. That wouldn't work quite so well. Still would be okay with one like this. Because 26 can't nicely, anyways, be divided by 4. I'm going to be working with a decimal. If you're fine with working with decimals or a fraction, go for it. But um, it, 
This one is probably easier using distributive property. This one here, about the same. If you like the distributive property, it'll always work. If you like to kind of work backwards and get rid of the brackets uh, or the number it multiplied by the brackets first, it can work and maybe make life a bit simpler for you. Um, so let's take a look at this guy here. Um, in some cases, some ways, this one, because we've got a negative here, negative inside, it's important with distributive property stuff, um, but it does make working backwards maybe just a smidgen easier. So let's take a look. Distributive property first, so 12 is equal to negative 2 times x minus 3. So distributive property, I've got negative 2 times x, negative 2 times subtract 3, or times negative 3. And so this ends up becoming, and this is the trickiest part of the distributive property. Okay, so everybody gets, oh, negative 2 times x, that's got to be negative 2x. Where everybody, if they're going to make a mistake, what they do is they end up with, well, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Um, and they say, okay, minus 6. But that's not right. Because what this actually is going to be is it's going to be minus negative 6. And minus negative, if you remember back to grade 7 math, becomes plus. It becomes plus a positive 6. Um, so this here is going to be negative 2x plus 6. I just like to think of this as I've got the negative 2 times the x, negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 3 becomes positive 6. I find that to be the easiest way for me anyways to make sense of that. Okay, now I've got that positive 6, so i got to subtract 6 from both sides. So I'm going to subtract it from the other side, which means I have to subtract it from this side. Plus 6, minus 6. Um, I've got 6 that I'm left with over here is equal to negative 2x. Uh, negative 2 times x, the opposite of that is divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. And I'm left with x on this side is equal to negative 3. All right, now, working backwards, um, in this case here, I'm going to divide, as my first step, both sides by negative 2. Um, so let me just rewrite it here for us. So this is a case where, by dividing by negative 2 first, um, we eliminate the con potential confusion of multiplying negative 2 times negative 3 in there. So dividing both sides by negative 2, left on this side with a negative 6, is equal to x minus 3. Right, i got to get rid of the minus 3, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Negative 6 plus 3 on this side, because I'm going to add 3 to the other side, equal to x minus 3. Plus 3, there we go. The negative 3 plus 3 goes away. I'm left with an x here. I do have to remember my rules for adding and subtracting integers here. Negative 6 plus 3 is going to end up becoming just negative 3. And you can see the answer is the same on both sides. Potentially, I'm less writing anyways over here. Um, again, it sort of does depend if <laughs> that number is a factor of 12. So in this case, yeah, 2 times something does give me 12, and the something is in some nasty fraction or something. So there we go. You've got an assignment to do. Get at it. Have fun.